have a video that talks about being in the army as an idiot Mike, what the day-to-day -day life is like, but you may be curious additionally, what is it like when I'm a private compared to when I'm a sergeant and all that kind of stuff. So let's break down the different roles at the different ranks as an idiot Mike. What's up my friends, US Army veteran Christopher Chaos, and today we're talking about the different responsibilities of you know, what you're gonna do in the different ranks as an 88 Mike, a motor transportation operator, since that's what I was in the Army. So I kind of have that first-hand knowledge as to what it'll be like when you're a private or a sergeant or whatever. If you wanna stay up to date about the Army, you wanna learn about the Army because you wanna join, maybe you're already in the Army, maybe you're a veteran yourself, that's the kind of content I like to provide here on this channel. So do me a favor, look down below, do you have that button clicked? to be subscribed to my channel. Also, do you have all notifications turned on? Because I definitely recommend that, so that way you get alerts as soon as new videos go live to include the live streams and join the notification platoon. But after you've done that, let's continue with the video and let's talk about what you might do at the different ranks as the MOS of an 88 Mike. Now, of course, keep in mind, it may vary slightly here and there based on your unit, based on what's going on, a lot of other kind of factors, but for the most part, I just wanna kinda of give you a general idea of what to possibly expect. If you're someone that wants to join and become an 88 Mike, or maybe you're already an 88 Mike, but you're brand new to being an 88 Mike, or maybe you were an 88 Mike, and you just kinda of wanna hear the perspective of me. So we're gonna have to start off from the very bottom of a private, but the kind of key thing with the MOS of an 88 Mike is that really a E1 through E4, it's essentially the same job for the most part. It may fluctuate a little bit as an E4, which I'll talk about that, but starting off, I mean, usually E1 through E4, same kind of role. You're the individuals that are driving the trucks. You're the ones that may have to, you know, move ammo from, you know, the, the, ammo holding area out to the range or move supplies or pick up you know, parts for the maintenance people. So you're gonna be the driver for those vehicles, whatever vehicles you may have at that unit. The vehicles can definitely vary based on the unit. You may just simply have some PLS vehicles, maybe just some five tons, maybe you've got the HETs. So it'll kind of vary from unit to unit as far as which vehicles you will drive. A lot of times units will assign you your vehicle. So you have a vehicle that you're responsible for, but that doesn't mean that you always get to drive that vehicle. Sometimes, you know, you may be driving someone else's vehicle. Someone else may be driving your vehicle. They just sometimes break it down by what vehicle you're responsible for. That way it just makes it easier for like Mondays for command maintenance to assign someone to that vehicle, take care of your vehicle. And then after that, you know, fall in on some of the other vehicles that maybe aren't assigned to someone or that person's gone. So your E134 are typically the drivers. You could be a driver for a HET vehicle, a PLS vehicle, just depends on what you have at the unit, but you could still also be a driver for like your platoon sergeant or your platoon leader. Those are commonly roles that are E4 and below. Sometimes you may have an E5 that's in that role, but your pretty common kind of driver for the platoon sergeants, platoon leaders are gonna be the E4 and below. You could even potentially get pulled from your platoon to go be like the commander or the first sergeant's driver as sometimes they want the 88 mics, you know, if they have that in that company or that troop or that battery to go and do that role. But sometimes that just depends on, you know, you know who they want to have as their driver, I guess, too. That can vary by the unit. I've seen it sometimes where it was a, a, a mechanic that was the commander's driver. I've seen it sometimes where it's the admin person that works around the first sergeant, the commander that's their driver. So it really just kind of depends. So an E4 specialist is often a driver as well, but sometimes at that level, you start to kind of fall into the role of a TC or a truck commander. That is the person that is just sitting in the passenger seat doing a lot of different tasks that I'll also talk about in a minute because that is also the role of usually your E5 or your sergeants. So let me talk about it at the sergeant level, what you're doing as an ADM Mike, but keep in mind that sometimes E4s are doing this as well, and that usually just depends on the platoon. So if the platoon is short, on NCOs or they just need more people in these trucks to be a truck commander, to be a TC, and they don't have enough NCOs to fill for that spots, then sometimes the E4s are filling those spots. So let's talk about that TC role. This is commonly done at the E5 level, but also sometimes at the E4 level, depending on how many TCs they need. But is what that TC's job is, is to be that truck commander, to be the person sitting in the passenger seat to work some of the equipment. These individuals usually have like the radio sometimes, maybe you have the Blue Force Tracker, you have either the JCR or the JBCP, which is your navigation system inside the vehicle to be able to track you know, where individuals are at, send up reports. So those are the individuals sitting in the passenger seat to be able to work those kind of systems. They're kind of like in charge of the truck, you know, in a way, you know, you're you're kind of the one that's making sure that, hey, everything is good to go. You have your driver check everything out. You maybe go behind them and check it out behind them as well to make sure they did their, their job of checking out the vehicle properly. 
Some examples, like you're on mission, all right? You have your driver, that's usually maybe an E4 and below, and then you're in that passenger seat as an E5, as that specialist that's got some experience, and you're the one kind of, you know, making sure to relay the instructions to the driver of like, hey, coming up ahead, we're gonna be making this turn. You're usually with other vehicles, you're usually just following the vehicle in front of you anyways, but you're still kind of giving that person a heads up, hey, that lead vehicle that's maybe the one in front of you is getting ready to make a right turn, so be ready for it to, especially if you're a, you know, a vehicle that's got like a large trailer and you have to swing that turn pretty wide to be able to make that corner. They're also relaying information like on, on mission, right? All right, hey, when we come up here, the, the vehicles are gonna start to break off. I need you to head over to the right because we're gonna get downloaded by the forklift over here or by the crane. So those individuals are making sure that the truck is going to where it needs to go, make sure the spacing between the, them and the vehicle in front of them is the proper spacing. All the equipment is turned on. Sometimes you have the jammers to jam like IED frequencies and other kind of you know equipment from the enemy. So you're making sure that stuff's all turned on and working properly. So that's an important role as that you know vehicle commander, but this can still be a role as an E6. It depends on how the platoon is kind of broken down and what your mission is, but you could still be doing that same exact job as an E6, but you may also be in charge of the overall mission that's going on as well. You might be that NCO that is in charge of that particular mission. Not always the case, because sometimes you have even higher ranking that's above you that's kind of overseeing the mission, but you may be that staff sergeant, that E6 that is kind of overall in charge of making sure the mission kicks off properly. You may be, you know, just a small element that's in that mission. Maybe there's other individuals in that mission with you, but you're in charge of the transportation piece of that element. So you're still the TCA vehicle, but you're still also now responsible for making sure all of the other trucks that are also carrying this cargo are going to the right location, making sure that once we get there, that it gets downloaded properly, we get back into the proper order, so that way when we're ready to head out and get out of there, that the vehicles are staged and ready to go. In some cases, you could be also the convoy commander as an E6. You might be the staff sergeant, and depending on who else is in that convoy, you might be the higher ranking individual for this particular mission, and you might be designated to be the convoy commander. Again, going back, it just depends on the mission. Sometimes that is a lieutenant that is the convoy commander, sometimes it's a captain, sometimes it's a sergeant first class, but there are often, I've seen missions that I have done where it's just an E6 that is in charge of that mission, and that is the convoy commander because that person has the experience, that person is the higher ranking individual, so they have delegated that individual to be the convoy commander for this upcoming mission because they outrank everybody or they're just the one with the most experience. They could also essentially be the assistant convoy commander. So maybe they have a lieutenant with them and then that staff sergeant is the assistant convoy commander. So a lot of that still, again, it really varies, but to know what to expect as an E6, as an 88 Mike, you could, be a, you could be a convoy commander, you could be assistant convoy commander, you could just be a TC for that vehicle. Moving up now to E7 to the sergeant first class, most commonly you are probably the platoon sergeant now. You can still have E6 be a platoon sergeant, but that's usually only in the case of we don't have an E7 yet slotted into that platoon and they are waiting for them to come or whatever. So the E6 takes charge and is the platoon sergeant, but most commonly they're gonna to try to get an E7 into that position to be the platoon sergeant for that distro platoon, the transportation platoon. I mean, there's a lot of terminology they may use, but the platoon that has the 88 mics but you could also be in charge of other MOSs too, because there's sometimes like, you know, a supply and transportation platoon that has both 88 mics and also fuelers or also some ammo individuals or whatever. So you could be an 88 mic that's in charge of that platoon that has more than just 88 mics in the platoon. The E7, the Sergeant First Class could still go out on a mission. They could become, you know, the convoy commander for this mission, the overall NCOIC for that mission. So they do still sometimes go out on mission, but sometimes they're in charge of the overall picture of the platoon. So at the E7 level, you may have bigger things to worry about than going on a mission. You may have to worry about several missions that are going on within the platoon. And so you're staying behind to keep track of all those missions and making sure they're kicking off properly. Then it gets a little trickier when you move on from there. You go to being a master sergeant and you could be in charge of the platoon, but usually you're moving on past that as that role. And now you're maybe, Sometimes the, you know, the master driver, you're the one that has to make sure that everybody in the, that company is getting licensed properly on the equipment they need to be licensed on. Maybe you are the motor sergeant, you know, so you're in charge of all the vehicles, you know, that are coming in, whether, whether they're from the transportation platoon or the maintenance platoon or whatever, you're in charge of like all the vehicles. So this one gets a little bit kind of trickier. It really just depends on the unit you're at as far as what your role is as an 88 mic, as an E8. Uh, if you're talking about on the master sergeant side. So that one kind of just depends. But if you're looking for what to expect when you get that high, 
you're probably like the master driver. You're probably, you know, in charge of all the vehicles in the motor pool I and mean, kind of different other roles. Now, when you move up from there, it kind of loses what your MOS is. You really don't do ADA Mike stuff as a first sergeant, as a sergeant major, or as a command sergeant major. You're kind of just overall in charge of that whole entire company, that battalion, whatever the case is, as that higher NCO role and not really doing 88 Mike related stuff anymore because now you're a senior NCO. I mean, you're, you were a senior leader or senior NCO in some of the other kind of positions, but now you're not really doing 88 Mike stuff. So you pretty much can expect pretty much when you get to about E8 that you're not gonna do much 88 Mike stuff anymore and it's more of the senior non-commissioned officer type of uh, roles that you're gonna be kind of falling into. So there definitely does come a point in time where you're gonna stop doing your job, all right? And just kind of expect that, especially when you get higher in the ranks, they're gonna more look at you for your leadership knowledge rather than your MOS specific knowledge. If you haven't seen the video that I did that kind of talks about what the day-to-day -day life can be like as an ADA mic, I definitely recommend checking that out. I'll have it available to you right here. If you have not seen my latest video upload, check it out right here, I got it available for you. Check out the links down in the description for social media, the Discord channel, all that fun stuff. Thanks for hanging out, thanks for watching. I'm Christopher Chaos, I'll see you next time. See ya.